Instagram has changed tremendously, even though it's still a very visual platform that everybody uses with photos and videos, is no longer the place where you just come in and post a photo, right? So what kind of advice would you give to people that are coming in, posting a photo and just go away? I mean, if you really truly want to build a tribe and you want to engage with people, how do you go in and do it, do it right? You do this. The days of posting and leaving are over. That used to work. That's how I grew a quarter million in 10 months. But that doesn't work anymore. The rules have changed. You're right. And the way that it's changed is now Instagram has shifted into something that's all about creating and cultivating real relationships um, to the point where after you post, you cannot put, put your phone down. Mm -hmm. That is the moment that you need to be there the most. John Ferrara is the Instagram man. He helps entrepreneurs create raving fans, position themselves as an authority, and engage with their ideal clients using Instagram. Now, here's your host for the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show, Sandy Viter. Where do you find motivation to show up every day? My followers. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's let's face it. Without them, I. What am I doing, right? I, I show up for them. Uh, I show. I've always shown up for them. There, we've developed this community. I feel like I've created so many friends, um, so many people, so many relationships that didn't exist before. And I'm not just talking about, hey, how's it going? Like real deep conversations with these followers that I've had. And my motivation just stems from wanting to help them, to wanting to serve them. And on the other spectrum, it's I want to challenge myself. I find that challenging yourself is so important because I actually did a post on this not too long ago where I talk about uh, when you're in your comfort zone, it's not, you're not being stagnant. Um, you're not being standstill. You're declining. Comfort zone equals decline. It's, it's, if you're not growing, you're dying. And, and to challenge yourself every single day and to step, even, even if it's just a little bit outside your comfort zone, in order to, uh, in order to grow into, even if you're failing, it's still growth, right? It's still, um, it's still outside your comfort zone. It's so important to continue to challenge yourself. Very true. That is a very good advice. Now, Instagram has changed tremendously, even though it's still a very visual platform that everybody uses with photos and videos, is no longer the place where you just come in and post a photo, right? So what kind of advice would you give to people that are coming in, posting a photo and just go away? I mean, if you really truly want to build a tribe and you want to engage with people, how do you go in and do it, do it right? You do this. The days of posting and leaving are over. That used to work. That's how I grew a quarter million in 10 months. But that doesn't work anymore. The rules have changed. You're right. And the way that it's changed is now Instagram has shifted into something that's all about creating and cultivating real relationships um, to the point where after you post, you cannot put, put your phone down. Mm -hmm. That is the moment that you need to be there the most. And I'm talking about engaging with your following, um, liking comments, replying to comments, moving people from the comment section into the DM section. Um, it's so important to really uh, engage with, these, with your followers because within the first hour of posting anything, um, it's so important to, to, uh, to use that as an indicator to the algorithm that the engagement, it, it, the algorithm will, will tell from that engagement within the first hour. Another thing is to really show up authentically every single day. Now, people are calling BS all the time, right? We have what, I, what we use sometimes say, it's a, it's a BS indicator. And <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> People's BS indicators are so in tune with other people that that uh, they know if you're if you're faking something. They know. Let me fix my light here. They know if you're faking. They know if you're pretending to be someone you're not. And listen, I have noticed that we we all struggle. We all have our insecurities. We all have uh, our own issues, our own challenges. That's that's what makes us human, right? And it's it's that 
that's going to, to um, differentiate us from the world, right? What's your story? And that's why I love Instagram stories so much. What's your story? What's the, sh- what's the story that you're, you're, you're sharing with your audience? And nobody can tell your story as well as you can. I think that a lot of people, they struggle with the idea that their life isn't as, as exciting to share, right? I don't live in a, an exciting life. Um, you know, I don't really do a lot of great stuff. I'm usually just, you know, I spend eight or nine hours in my office and that's, about, that's my life. And I go home with my family and like, what am I sharing really? And that's my life. <laughs> the thing is this, there's on YouTube, there was this, this is what I said. There's this Middle Eastern uh, couple, right? Man and woman. And they were, they had this YouTube channel and they were recording themselves eating this, the sandwich in their kitchen. And this video, for whatever reason, got so many views, hundreds of thousands of views. But you think to yourself, why? Why are they getting views? They're just they're two people eating a sandwich. I don't understand. Other people's lives are, are, are when, okay, when we look at our own lives through our own lens, it becomes very familiar. But if you're looking at somebody else's life, even if they're eating a sandwich, it's very different. Mm-hmm. than what They might be doing the same thing and the same actions, and they might be eating the same sandwich. But looking into a Middle Eastern home, especially if you're from you know, North America, if you're looking into a Middle Eastern home, into a Middle Eastern family, into a place where you've never been or you've only seen on TV and, and you're seeing somebody else you know, in their own space, it's so intriguing and it's so interesting to see somebody else's life. And I always say to people, you know, don't disqualify the importance and the entertaining aspect and uh, the, 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 um, the imp- just the importance of your own life. It's, it's share worthy. It's always going to be share worthy. You know, a lot of people, they question, you know, I'm just going to the office. Is it worth sharing? Yes, it's worth sharing because what you're, I record myself getting a coffee every single morning. Okay? <laughs> if you've watched my, guys, if you've watched my vlogs, I record myself getting a coffee every morning. Millions of other people get a coffee every morning. But his Millions. coffee is better. My coffee tastes like dirty water if you actually. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is this, is that the way that I get coffee is very different from the way that you get coffee, the way that anybody watching live gets coffee. Even if they're getting the same coffee, the emotion and the feeling and the view, and you're seeing it through one person's lens, through one person's perspective, which is very different than yours. So it's very important to just, um, you know, understand that you, anything that you share is going to be interesting. I mean, it might not be interesting to everybody, but the perspective will not be the same as their own. So it's very- I love that yeah. analogy. I love that perspective. <laughs> it's all about mindset. It's all about what you have here in your mind. And what you have here in your mind, you're actually going to transfer here to your heart and to your actions. And that is actually probably what's driven you your entire life, you yeah. know? And when you were 27, and then when you were 29, and now where you are, yeah. uh, the way that you make coffee. absolutely so um what other tips can you share what what are some of the um you know practical tips that you can share with um some of the business owners to grow their accounts i think that a lot of people they they focus on the tools right um i don't think that you know they want to know what the best apps are they want to know um how to edit properly they want to know how to uh you know what phone should I use? What camera should I use? Do I need filters? Do I not need filters? What are the tools that I need? And I always say, start with what you have. That's step number one. And this is back to the personal development thing where it's always being resourceful, right? A lot of people, they don't lack resources that lack a source of resourcefulness, being resourceful, which means that you always start with what you have, you know, always choose the best camera. You I don't own a DSLR. I don't, right? I don't, I don't own a, a, a um, a point and shoot. I don't own any, any fancy cameras. I do everything on my cell phone. Everything is on my cell phone. I don't have, and, and like I said, even when I started out, I didn't have a coat rack. I borrowed a camera from my mom. Um, I didn't have a tripod. I used the coat rack, right? I was always being resourceful. And so that's step number one, always be resourceful. Step number two, it doesn't matter about your tools. And the reason it doesn't matter is because no matter what, story should always be at the top of your list. What is the story? What are you trying to, 
um, communicate to your audience. What is the message that you have? What are you trying to say? What do you, what do you want to teach them? That right there is more important than any editing that you can do, than any uh, special effects that you could have, that anything, any, any uh, high quality phone or high quality images, what comes down to is the story and how you're communicating to your office, to your, to your audience. And that even includes posts where, you know, people want to know the best filters. They want to know what apps make me uh, have the smoothest skin, right? What's going to make my cheekbones show <laughs> yeah. These are the things. It's very true. These are the people want are, are putting their focus on that when really their focus should be on the value that they're, that they're giving their audience instead, you know? And, and it's also getting to a point where these pictures are becoming so fabricated that, people are starting to look like mannequins and, and, and mm. they're not real, right? It's, it's so, it's so fabricated and it's so heavily um, photoshopped and edited that, you know, the authenticity gets lost. And that's a very, we could talk about this if you want, you can stop me. if, if No, you know. go for it. I'm oh, sure the yeah. audience wants to hear it. I yeah, mean, th I, this is what this show is all about. We want yeah. to hear the authentic, you know, the yeah. authenticity. There's a lot, and I've seen this so many times, there's a lot of teens right now. They're, they're struggling internally and that they're, they're developing, you know, body dysmorphia challenges and, and they're comparing themselves to uh, other people through these fabricated and edited pictures where they're trying to achieve, um, they're trying Something to- Something that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's, it's unachievable, right? Right, right. It's right. made up. But it's very real to them, and it's becoming such a such a serious topic where um, you know people and 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 teens and and a lot of everybody. I mean, everybody starts to compare themselves. I have friends, and I know people personally that are literally deleting their apps and social media just because they don't want to to, to compare their lives to other people anymore. Mm -hmm. Right, they, you know, they see this person go on a, on a trip, and this person uh, bought this car, and this person everything's become very fabricated. So my advice is always to show up authentically. Um, I've noticed that a lot of uh, pictures that are in the moment that are real and raw, they actually do the best. They actually have the, the most engagement because, because it seemed it is in today. It seemed to be very brave mm -hmm. to be posting something that's, that's not heavily filtered or, or and very authentic. It's very brave. And people support that. People support that because the person that's posting that kind of that kind of content has the courage to do so and the people supporting it want the courage to do so so they support instead of doing you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah you you right. see that when when people yeah. open up and they're more genuine they probably yeah. get a better response yeah absolutely now um obviously you see a lot when somebody's not genuine and you see a lot you know, of that negative response with social media when people are posting something that is fake and creating a negative response with especially teenagers, but also the shift from being a social platform where people used to use it just for, you know, social purposes, but now it's becoming more of a business tool yep. where, where people are using it more and more for um, selling purposes and for a, a, a as an instrumental part of their business you, where they go in every day and they interact every day um, as part of their business. It's, it's the best. You can't beat it. You cannot beat it. Instagram is just that it's one thing where it's easy to learn how to use. Um, it's very effective and it's one of those last platforms, social media platforms that still contains that authenticity. It's one of the best to start creating real relationships. Um, I always say that, you know, in order to make sales on Instagram, what you need to do first is deliver value. First, you have to always deliver value so you can attract your ideal follower. Once you've attracted your ideal follower, step two is to engage with them, right? You want to engage, you bring them into the, into, uh, the DMs, right? You send them a direct message and you talk to them there. You share uh, stories. You can, but you've got to be genuine about it. You can't be showing Celsi. fake. You can't, right? Uh, you always have to be genuine. Show genuine interest. If you've read the book, um, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, it's always coming from a place of being genuine. If you if you fake it, that BS, uh, that BS radar. Uh, radar is going to go off. Exactly. So once you've 
once you've created those relationships and you've been genuine and you've had the opportunity to talk and really get to know what your uh, follower, what your now your friend is struggling with, then you can offer your services, then you can offer your product, then you can um, you know tell them I have this. Would you be interested in this? And and I think that a lot of people are doing this wrong where they're forgetting to add the value. I always say, you know, add the add 10 times the value, then ask for the sale. Gary Vee calls it jab, 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 right hook. Um, mm-hmm. always, you always have to add the value before. So also you want to uh, show up in Instagram stories daily in a, in a way where your audience is going to get to know you. You want to share um, a lot of, uh, things about yourself. I actually spoke about this not too long ago. It's called the me too factor and the me too factor gets your audience to say me too. So for example, in my, in my video, I said, you know, I love pens and a lot of people were messaging saying well, me too. I love it. Right? Like I love pens. When you get your audience to say me too, you're actually creating a strong connection because they have something in, in common. common. Not only that, they're actually, every time you share something with, about yourself, you're, ta- you're peeling, you're literally peeling away a layer of something that's unknown. The more people can use these building blocks of information about yourself to put together, and the more they, they, they know who you are as a genuine human being, the more they trust you. And when people trust you, they're going to buy from you. People are now buying from people. Now, we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.